2020 was a chaotic year for consumers and companies alike, though in CD Projekt Red's case, they brought their misfortune on themselves. If you could go back in time one year and warn people of CD Projekt's fall from grace, no one would believe you. This we say from experience. In 2018, this channel tried to remind the gaming community of the downgrade CD Projekt Red had inflicted on their magnum opus, The Witcher 3, how they had denied the downgrade in progress. No, okay, we didn't, we didn't downgrade it, it was, yeah. we didn't, we didn't downgrade. Deflected the blame on video compression and deceived their consumers right up to the day of release. Nobody wanted to hear it. Nobody wanted to look at the overwhelming evidence. CD Projekt Red had struck gold with The Witcher 3, and the goodwill they had generated with the consumers seemed to have encouraged them to think they could get away with it once again with Cyberpunk. Though that was not to be. Their luck finally ran out in 2020. Cyberpunk 2077 is a game so troubled that not even the most passionate CD Projekt Red loyalists can sweep its problems under the rug. Its December 2020 release will go down as one of the worst launches if not the most disastrous corporate catastrophe in gaming history, as it single-handedly destroyed in a couple of days all the rapport CD Projekt Red had built over a decade. Cyberpunk is so buggy and unstable that not even CD Projekt Red's legacy of DRM-free GOG and the three witches can convince gamers to look the other way. How could they let this happen? How could the paragon of the games industry precipitate one of the worst launches in recent memory? How could a company go from making one of the best games of all time to launching the biggest disappointment in gaming history in the same decade? Obviously, they released it before it was ready. But why did they do this? Because they felt they had to. Why did they think there was no other choice? While many might say there's a story to be told here about the troubles in development, the principal cause of Cyberpunk's unfortunate launch can be traced back to June 9th, 2019, when Keanu Reeves went on stage at E3 to announce Cyberpunk would launch on the 16th of April, 2020. This announcement, coupled with the initial teaser trailer that set people up to expect the game would come when it's ready, doomed the game to a stillbirth. For if the studio committed to release the game when it's ready, people expect the game to be ready when it finally arrives. In Cyberpunk's case though, all the trailers did was set fans up to be disappointed. It didn't take long for CD Projekt Red to default on their commitment. On January 16th, 2020, CD Projekt Red took to Twitter to announce the first delay in Cyberpunk's release. Cyberpunk 2077 won't make the April release window and we're moving the launch date to September 17, 2020. We are currently at a stage where the game is complete and playable. Press X to doubt. Even in December 2020, players felt the game was incomplete, missing a significant number of promised features and broken to the point of being downright unplayable. If it's this bad now, how bad was the state of the game in early 2020? Bad enough that the launch was delayed again. City Project announced this development on June 18, 2020, in a Twitter post that is just hilarious in hindsight. We have decided to move the launch of Cyberpunk 2077 from September 17 to November 19. Those of you who are familiar with the way we make games know that we won't ship something which is not ready. Ready when it's done is not just a phrase we say because it sounds right. That's exactly what it is and nothing more. Those of you who are familiar with the way we make games know that we won't ship something which is not ready. The only people who are familiar with the way you make games would be the people who make your games. You know, your developers. And the stuff they say on Glassdoor doesn't paint a pretty picture of the way you make games. For instance, this is a review posted a week after Cyberpunk's launch by a programmer who claims to be a current employee at CD Projekt Red. Mismanaged workload. A lot is expected of you and sometimes it can be severely jarring because the written code is not traceable. A lot of code is from ex-employees that didn't really track and record what they were doing properly cleaning up after others, misunderstanding of what the IP and direction are, constant whim decisions, one to two people in high positions dictate too heavily on strange and absurd decisions. For example, micro focus on certain game assets and less care for others. Some people informed on changes, others not even told and have to find out from peers. Work environment can go from organized and understanding the goal to absolute chaos within a week. Too many frequent vision changes and very challenging to completely relapse on what you were originally doing. Advice to management. Clash heads together and set in stone your vision. Too many one-person rodeos making decisions and changes on feelings and whims. Think about gameplay and please listen to devs. We are equal. 
and we should be allowed to pitch volume equally about ideas, good or bad. Not all reviews are so recent. Many of them were posted by people claiming to be former employees. Why did they quit? This is what a review posted on October 3, 2018 had to say. Many teams are led and or directed by incompetent people who focus more on advancing their own career than shipping a good product. Developers are being fired if they speak up about their lead's incompetency. HR processes fail to solve any mismanagement issues, often leading to developers quitting their jobs. The upper management is rotten to the core and full of people skilled in only sucking up to the directors. Complete mess in terms of production leading to crunch all the time. Many leads and directors lie constantly, both to their teams and their leads. People exposing those lies are often forced to leave or are straight out fired. This lines up perfectly with CD Projekt's denial of The Witcher 3's downgrade before its launch and their misrepresentation of Cyberpunk's performance on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Many developers have been asked to put up positive reviews here to hide how things really are. This is alarming, especially when you realise this review was posted two years and two months before the Cyberpunk debacle. Go back another year and this is what reviews have to say. No real idea how to make a game beginning to end. Just put random stuff together and hope for the best. No long-term plan, structure or process. Stack management, a few people making all the decisions in a non-transparent, badly communicated way. The people making the decisions are rarely experts in the field that they make decisions in. Ridiculous amounts of time wasted on needless micromanagement due to insecure, incompetent leadership. The board of directors themselves need to rethink how to run the company, since the growth they had post-Witcher was not planned properly at all and as such was completely unscalable. And it looks like the consumers are feeling the effects of this now. This just hurts to read. Something you have worked on for over a month and it's gone because some higher up is unsure if it would sell well. Few of us had an idea to remake an old game. I will not say which. We got permission, worked on it in our spare time to make something beautiful and to improve ourselves, finished several parts of it. It's only for it to be scrapped because someone is unsure about it. This is corroborated by a review posted in August 2017. Decision paralysis that leads to them being made at whim of studio director and often reversed afterwards. The review lists only one pro which proved to be prophetic. It took three years, but still. Here's another review that might be relevant to CD Projekt Red's current predicament. The sad thing is that even CD Projekt Red is doing nothing to keep their key employees nor even to ask themselves what they were doing wrong in order to stop their employee leaking. Most of the employees that build The Witcher 3, especially foreigners with experience, aren't anymore on their ranks. Tons of your work and engagement will be lost because things are started and ended in chaotic, thoughtless way. Most of the time you will spend on re-implementing things that were cancelled a few weeks later. You cannot simply use old stuff because in the meantime most of the things has changed or are gone because the general vision has changed. Is this why the effects seen in the first Witcher 3 trailers could not be retained in the final build? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Moving on to another review. Incompetent, inefficient, indecisive directors who have very little idea about the organisational, financial and technological consequences of their actions. Unrealistic milestone dates versus expectations. Why does this sound so familiar? No time dedicated to polishing the game. I don't know how we pulled off Witcher 3. Advice to management. Get off your high horse. Currently you're making Witcher 3 look like a game done despite you, not thanks to you. The next review was posted days before the launch of Witcher 3's final expansion. Quite often, work will be lost or done in vain and no one will take responsibility for that. What is worse, the process will repeat itself exactly the same way. This also includes crunch, which is very big. Depending on team and project, it can be from an extra 10 to 40 hours per week lasting 10 to 80% of the project's time. That's huge, and it seems like it won't change in the future. Crunch problems are present even after Witcher 3, so it's not a past issue. On occasion, some important information will not be shared with team. Example, postponed release date, upcoming demo build, more crunch, and promises will not be kept. This review was posted on 26 of May 2016, but still proves shockingly accurate four and a half years later. On the 26th of October 2020, the official Cyberpunk Twitter account confirmed the November 19th release date. One day later, their very same account announced yet another delay. Today, we've decided to move the release date of Cyberpunk 2077 by 21 days. The new release date is December 10th. 
Some of you might also be wondering what these words mean in light of us saying we achieved gold master some time ago. Passing certification or going gold means the game is ready, can be completed and has all content in it. These words would come to haunt CD Projekt Red a month and a half later, as would the CEO's assessment of Cyberpunk's performance on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One is surprisingly good for such a huge world. A bit lower than on pros, but very good. As it turned out, performance is only surprisingly good if you expected Cyberpunk to destroy the machine, which coincidentally is the only thing console certification seems to care about, as was explained by an independent developer. Certification doesn't mean that your game is free of graphical bugs, free of performance issues, free of glitches, or even that it's functioning properly. Certification means the game should not mess up your console or your ability to use your console or break rules and trademarks. Certification is stuff like don't render critical stuff on screen, display warnings if your internet connection is lost, showcase the correct button labels, ensure unplugging and plugging back in your controller doesn't crash the game, stuff like that. Certification is not stuff like the textures pop up five seconds late or objects are floating or the game is glitching and my character is T-posing out of the car roof with no pants. That has nothing to do with cert and even if it comes up in cert, that's not cert's job. Certification as a process is a giant, giant list of rules and considerations you can access. You submit your game, wait a week or weeks and get a list back of fail criteria. If testing finds a lot of fail criteria, they might stop testing midway and return a partial list. You then get an opportunity to fix the problem or request a waiver. You generally cannot continue the submission process without all the testing criteria having been marked in the back end as a pass or as waived. For a waiver, the developer basically argues why they believe it is fair to be excluded from a requirement. The platform then agrees or disagrees depending on the game, the situation, the urgency of clearing cert and promises by the dev to fix fails in a day one patch. Anyway, after that you submit again. Cert checks against the giant list of rules again, but skip testing on the rules that you've gotten a waiver for. If all is clear, you get the ability to set a launch date and you're ready to go. You go through cert for patches too. So, what did Cyberpunk get a waiver for? Everything, it seems like if you play the game, or nothing if you read the transcript of CD Projekt Red's pre-release Q3 2020 earnings call. We got full unconditional certification from both platforms because we won the gold. So, the game is certified. So how did CD Projekt Red get this certification? In terms of the certification process and the third parties, this is definitely on our side. I can only assume that they trusted that we're going to fix things upon release. This didn't make either console platform look good in the eyes of the consumers and didn't win CD Projekt Red any favours with Microsoft or Sony. Instead of mitigating the reputational damage caused by their indiscretion, CD Projekt Red poured fuel on the fire by directing dissatisfied consumers to seek refunds from Microsoft and Sony when the last-gen console ports proved to be so broken that playing there was impossible. But this does not disqualify a game from certification, if the aforementioned informant is to be believed. If you make a game that's so buggy that your character spawns T-posing naked flying through the air while everything explodes at once and the only way to progress is to hope the NPC you need to talk to got flung exactly your way, but it adheres to all the cert rules, it passes certification. That said, neither Sony nor Microsoft were prepared for the flood of refund requests, causing many requests to be declined. This was a bad look for all companies involved, prompting Sony to take the unprecedented step of removing Cyberpunk 2077 from their PlayStation Store and CD Projekt Red made a pathetic attempt to spin the removal as a mutual decision. Following our discussion with PlayStation, a decision was made to temporarily suspend digital distribution of Cyberpunk 2077 on PlayStation Store. A decision was made? Who made this decision? Sony wasn't nearly as ambiguous. Sony Interactive Entertainment strives to ensure a high level of consumer satisfaction. Therefore, we will begin to offer a full refund for all gamers who have purchased Cyberpunk 2077 via PlayStation Store. Sony Interactive Entertainment will also be removing Cyberpunk 2077 from PlayStation Store until further notice. Cyberpunk's launch is a catastrophe on a historic scale. It's fallout unprecedented. CD Projekt Red should have seen this coming. How could they not? They knew about the pitiful state the game was in and they made sure they were the only ones who knew right up to the launch of the game. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One users had no way of knowing their product would be dead on arrival, as the only information they had to go on was CD Projekt Red's reassurance that performance was surprisingly good. 
Of course, no code was provided to independent reviewers to confirm this claim. However, CD Projekt Red insists they had a good reason. We've actually shown console footage, but never on the last-gen consoles. The reason is that we were updating the game on last-gen consoles until the very last minute, and we thought we'd make it in time. Unfortunately, this resulted in giving it to reviewers just one day before the release, which was definitely too late and the media didn't get a chance to review it properly. That was not intended. We were just fixing the game until the very last moment. Do you believe it wasn't intended? Curiously, this was not the reason provided to the New York Times, who were told in an email that CD Projekt Red would hold off sending console codes until close to launch so that they could send them securely, which never happened. Neither of these justifies CD Projekt Red's unprecedented prohibition on reviewers using their own footage in launch reviews. This prevented independent media from demonstrating the severe instability plaguing the version that CD Projekt Red carefully chose for them. Sure, they could describe the bugs they encountered, but without footage to corroborate their claims, it was their word versus CD Projekt Red, which is exactly what CD Projekt Red or indeed any publisher with a hither to good reputation would want. CD Projekt Red knew exactly what they were doing which makes their subsequent apology ring hollow. First of all, we'd like to start by apologising to you for not showing the game on base last-gen consoles before it premiered and in consequence, not allowing you to make more informed decisions about your purchase. Come now, did you want them to make a more informed decision? Would that be in CD Projekt Red's best interests? Or would it cause consumers to cancel their pre-orders and hold off on buying the game on launch? This harkens back to 2015 when CD Projekt apologised for downgrading The Witcher 3 after it launched, after months if not years of denying there was any downgrade in the first place. If gamers made their purchasing decision based on 2013 materials, I'm deeply sorry for that, and we are discussing how we can make it up to them because that's not fair. That's right, it wasn't fair for PC users, and you could have made it up to them by restoring the lost visuals. Failing that, you could have at least been not so deceptive with your next game. But alas, even this you could not do. You lied again, though it was to your console consumers this time. And look, you've even apologised again. Do apologies mean anything if we've been through this rigmarole before? CD Projekt Red lied about The Witcher 3, apologised then lied about Cyberpunk and prevented consumers from checking their claims and have now apologised again. Console buyers, do you accept their apology? Did they deserve another chance? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Of course, they would not have needed another chance had they not released Cyberpunk in a broken state. Why did they launch the game before it was ready? Because they had committed to releasing the game on a certain date and broken their commitment not once, not twice, but thrice. A game can only be delayed so many times before delays are all the game is known for, condemning the title to ridicule as vaporware. If CD Projekt Red delayed the launch yet again, they risked turning Cyberpunk into another Star Citizen or Duke Nukem, at least in the eyes of consumers. Would this be worse than launching as a broken product? Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Given the fact that Cyberpunk is considerably worse on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, perhaps it would have made more sense to use the last announcement to delay its launch on last generation consoles indefinitely, or at least until CD Projekt Red could improve it to the point that it was playable internally. CD Projekt Red have acknowledged they should have paid more attention to making it play better on the old console ports. It's hard to understand why CD Projekt Red placed such emphasis on shipping the game on current gen, next gen and PC at the same time when the performance and playability of the game varied wildly between these versions. If CD Projekt Red was sincere about shipping the game only when it was ready, each version of the game would have launched separately when it was ready. But that's not the path CD Projekt Red chose for reasons they would rather be cryptic about them. When asked if the game could have released without the old-gen consoles, this is what CD Projekt Red executives had to say. In pure theory, if we had decided that one day before the launch, then yes, we might have released just the PC version, but I'm not sure what else is included in that question, to be honest. What? In pure theory, if we had decided that one day before the launch, then yes, we might have released just the PC version, but I'm not sure what else is included in that question, to be honest. What does that mean? So could this have only been the new generation of consoles and PCs? The answer here is no. Notice how they immediately contradict themselves. This is reminiscent of the complaints in the reviews on Glassdoor. Next gens get a completely different version of the game, 
So it's not like we could have decided at any point recently to flip the switch, so to say, and change the old gen version to the next gen version and release only on next gens. As you have noticed, there is no native next gen release. The game runs on next gens and takes advantage of how next gens are performing, but it's not like we had a next gen version on our hands and decided to keep it on the shelf. Marcin Winsky added one more thing. Some time ago we decided upon a last gen version and, as you can see, we have not released a proper next gen version. We don't have it ready yet. What we did instead was promise that every single gamer who bought the game on last gen consoles would get a proper next gen update next year. Hang on, didn't they say all the demo footage was from next gen consoles? The gameplay will be switching between Xbox One X and Xbox Series X and you can check in the corner to see which one you're looking at. This has nothing to do with the question they were asked. The promise of a next gen update does not explain why they did not delay the last gen ports until they were playable. All these deflections and diversionary tangents do is hark back to their duplicitous denial of the Witcher 3 downgrade, even while they were in the process of downgrading it. There was no grade, no grade to downgrade, so yes. he was comparing He's comparing a final product with a product that wasn't playable, that wasn't a game yet, so he's mistaken. They lied through their teeth then, and they're lying through their teeth now. If they had been held accountable for it, perhaps things would be different with Cyberpunk. If loyalists hadn't shouted criticism down, The Witcher 3 downgrade could have had CD Projekt Red go, that was too close, never taken that risk again. But no, you let them get away with it once, they think they can get away with it again. Or worse, they think they can get away with anything. CD Projekt Red did it again because fanboys, pardon the term, created an environment that enabled, if not encouraged them to lie to their consumers when they felt it convenient. Cyberpunk is not the first time CD Projekt Red has deceived its consumers, but it is the first time they're facing the consequences for their deception. It shouldn't have taken this long, but it did, because consumers were complacent and chose to look the other way. This is not resentment talking. Indeed, it's quite the opposite. The Cyberpunk debacle has vindicated the points made in the Witcher 3 downgrade analysis. As for this video, this is a wake-up call for consumers and companies. It is up to us consumers to hold companies accountable for dishonesty and deception, because nobody else will. It is disheartening then to see consumers argue against their own interests by championing the very companies that lie to them. Fanboys deserve to be deceived. Despite what it may seem, I'm not salty about dislikes, more curious about the people that dislike these videos. Since they are likely to have bought Cyberpunk, I wonder how satisfied they must be with their purchase. If you dislike the downgrade analysis or this, tell us your experiences with Cyberpunk in the comment section below. And now a brief update on the channel. Due to ongoing issues, upload frequency will be noticeably decreased. If you held off on ringing the bell for fear of notification spam, this channel won't contribute to the problems so you might want to reconsider. If you'd like to watch more content like this, please subscribe, press the bell and select all. YouTube won't notify you of new uploads unless you select all. If you like this video, please press the like button and share it too, because YouTube won't. Several subscribers have reported that YouTube are screwing with their notifications, even when the bell button is enabled. So if that's true, just keep an eye out for our thumbnails. Help us, channel subscribers. You're our only hope. New videos will also be announced on Twitter, so please follow us over there too. Link is in the comments and the description below. We have a secondary channel we're using as a backup, just in case. So head over to there and like and subscribe that one too. While you're here, feel free to watch our analysis on Denuvo's history and performance impact, our analysis of Battlefield 5's controversies and our hardware analysis of CPUs and graphics cards. Thanks for tuning in.